when you were young and you hadn't um, totally figured out all the gender stuff yet, um, did you feel pressured by male gender stereotypes or female gender stereotypes? Um, yeah, a little. I, I spent a lot of time hiding, a lot of time um, looking outside of myself, um, kind of sitting um, outside myself, watching how people acted and trying to make sure that uh, I fit in. Um, so I spent a lot of time, matter of fact, several years dreaming about every single day, every single thing I did. Did they look at me this way? Did I say that the right way? So I spent a lot of time um, analyzing and trying to fit in. Uh, yeah, a lot of pressure. Also, um, gender stereotypes are just that. Yeah. Um, female, what's female, what's male, oh, come on, <laughs> oh, men like sports, oh, I know a lot of women who love sports and know a heck of a lot more than guys do about sports, yeah. um, so a lot of these stereotypes um, are made up, that's, like stereotypes. That's very true, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think I remember um, someone telling me about uh, you know, up until a certain period of time in American history, um, little boys um, and little girls wore dressed like um, clothes, um, and pink was a, a men's color, not a not a women's color. Everybody pretty much wore gray and black, and you know, we we create these these stereotypes to easily understand things, um, and sadly, sometimes. To control, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, if you take a, a step back and look at some of the stereotypes, some of the stereotypes are just that to control. So, yeah. so it was, it was to, to get back on topic. Um, it was hard. I I'm not in sports. Um, I'm not competitive. Although I've got several friends who would argue that to, to their grave, oh. I'm not competitive. <laughs> Um, so I don't, in so many ways, I did not fit the male stereotype, and yet I was trying to act in a male role. Um, what I did do was, although I was hiding that I was a woman, um, I tried to be genuine in everything but that. So my care of people, um, the respect that I gave people, um, the honesty, sometimes bluntness that I gave people um, is and always will be me. So um, in that regards, I kind of managed to um, bypass some of it and hide the hurt. Um, I've had more than one person tell me in my life before I transitioned that they had a hard time with me because they always felt like I was hiding something, which I was. Kind of hard to uh, um, you know, kind of hard to share that with people um, and kind of hard to hide it because if you're close with people, people will see that you're not always open, that you're always keeping something observed. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, there were some rough times. Yeah. Did you ever talk to any of your friends about this um, like before you had started transitioning maybe when you were Absolutely not. Do you, um, do you wish you had? No. I think I'd be dead if I had. Um, I was raised in the 70s. Um, I'm a, born in the 60s, raised in the 70s. Kind of give you an idea of age here. Um, raised in the 70s, uh, um, East Coastish area uh, where I was raised, um, attitudes, are kind of, kind of like what we're seeing in North Carolina right now, Ooh. attitudes. Um, so yeah, um, as a matter of fact, even bringing that up to my mom, because we talked about that, um, my mom, bless her heart, she she's wished that I could have, but at the same time she acknowledged that if I had that time frame, I probably would have gotten killed by some, some crazy. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I did not share with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I think the earliest I shared with anybody was maybe about seven or eight years ago. Does being openly trans, do you notice discriminatory thing? If you applied to a job, do you think you would be less likely to get it? I've heard about that. Yeah. Um, so, a couple notes on that. So, I have not had the experience on the job side yet. I've been very blessed that the company that I'm at um, accepted me um, and has supported me. So, um, my understanding is that's a, a pretty big thing. Um, as the averages that I keep hearing quoted are that over 80% of transgender women are unemployed. Of the, of the uh, individuals who manage to find a job, it takes one to two years where it might take one to two months otherwise. So in that regard, on the job front, um, I'm terrified of that, especially since um, my current role is a very male-dominated uh, tech role. So um, I'm, and that's not to say that all tech roles are male dominated, that's not the case. I just happen to be in a tech role that you don't see many women at all. So, so there's that piece. Um, being in California, I have not noticed directly any discrimination. I think I've been pretty lucky that way. Also, while if I'm out personally, I might be uncomfortable, a little bit and that's just me when I'm with friends I don't give a about anybody yeah. I'm all about my friends so I don't pay attention to um, the jerk waiter or, or whatnot I don't I would I'd never see it unless the jerk waiter was being a jerk to my friend and then I would see it and be upset um, so no I have not encountered any um, discrimination as of yet um, I'm also of the opinion, and you have to have a thick skin, and I've never had a thick skin. That's also why it's taken me so long to transition. Um, but I'm of the opinion that, you know, if people want to say bad things about me or giggle or, or whatnot, let them. As long as when they're dealing with me, they're able to be professional. What they do after they've dealt with me um, on their own time, I don't care. <laughs> That's, that's them being little people, not me being little people. Um, if they're able to be professional when they're dealing with me, that's all that matters. That's their job. Um, their job and their personal are two different things. So. Was everyone around you accepting of your decision before and after? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I was very blessed. Very, very blessed. Um, all of my friends, um, all of my family um, have supported me. I've got the, the conversations as, uh, and by the way, that is, at least for me, was the hardest thing. The absolutely the hardest thing was to go to each of my friends. And I held off until the last minute. I held off until I was transitioning on the job because I had several friends who knew each other um, and I knew that it would be out no matter what. So I waited until the day that I announced the job and then started making my friends, um, all of them were like, we love you. We don't give a, um, we don't care other than maybe we don't understand, um, but we know who you are and you're you and uh, we love you. Same thing with the parents. So I feel blessed because there have been more than a few people that I have um, heard of um, who have brought it up to their parents who have been kicked out on the street mm -hmm. or every friend has disowned them or, or whatnot. So I'm very blessed that all of the friends and family um, are the people that I thought they were. So. Do you have any advice for people who are thinking of transitioning? Yeah, and I, I think it's a hard advice. And the hard advice is because once, you, once you're sure, you want to move forward, you want to move forward, there's this part of you that is screaming, I'm done, I need to be me. Um, that part is just, it, it, can, it can rush you through things before you've had a chance to, and I'm not saying stop you, 
but a chance for you to maybe do it a little better. And that is take a step back. Think about all the things. Go to group. Um, groups will scare you. Groups will awe you. You're going to see um, under the transgender umbrella, which is a very large umbrella, you're going to see a lot of differences. Um, some of them might not appeal to who you are. Some of them um, are going to make you sit there and go, so um, I, I recommend um, group and not just one, different, several different groups. I recommend listening, um, making some older friends in the transgender community as well. And the reason why I say that is because you'll typically only hear the positive um, within a group or online or on YouTube. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so... You don't hear the hard parts. And it's important to at least be aware of the hard parts so that you'll be able to get through them. And so that's my advice is to you know, take a step back. Even though it's so hard, take a step back, listen, and look. Don't avoid. Look for the hard parts so that you can wrap your mind around, oh my God, 80% unemployment for a transgender woman. Um, how am I going to handle that? Um, you know, things like that. So I think it's very important to take your time and think out your transition, talk with people, um, and don't listen to all the positive. Look for the negative because the negative is there. And if you're blind to that negative, you're going to have a very, very hard time coping with the transition where I think that if you are aware of the negative, you're not going to have a problem with coping at all. So that would be my, my advice. All right. Those are all the questions I have for now. Thank you very much for speaking with me. That was great. You're welcome. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.